is where does it's Christ our example and uh, first slide is where does hope come from and I rushed through the second part of this verse last week pretty fast and uh, trying to get through so I'm just going to review the last half of Romans 15 verse 4 B so through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope we all need encouragement and the way we get encouragement is through patience through and then we get hope perseverance means that sometimes we're uh, translated as patience the new american standard says in 5 3 that not only this but we also exalt our tribulations knowing that tribulations brings about perseverance. I like, because I, I grew up King James Version, not only, not only so, but, the glory in to, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing tribulation worketh patience. Trials are what, bring, are what brings patience to our lives. Uh, and it's sometimes that's difficult to go through unless you learn to trust God completely. The second part of the verse, and I said I was going to go through it real first, is encouragement. God's Word not, not only teaches us patience, but to endure, but encourage us to in the process. And I, I wrote here, and I, I think I might have said it before, and, and there's many people in the church that encourage me often, okay? I get messages, I get notes, I get people walk up and say something. But I'm going to point out Gary this morning. Every Saturday, without fail, Gary calls me and says, Brother, what you preaching on tomorrow? I said, this. He said, well, I just want to study it. I want to be prepared. That encourages me as a pastor. Uh, others when I get finished, Mark is, you know, I, I'm with him almost every day. and He encourages me every day. And others of you encourage me. But we have to be here to encourage one another, another, not to tear down one another. And so think of that when you talk. I got, uh, well, I'll get that in a minute. <clears throat> Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you also are doing. Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or dismay, for the Lord your God is wherever you go. Uh, Psalms 12, uh, 86, 12, and 13. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. This is a song, okay? I, I, I was, this is in Psalms, and when we were at Bellevue, we put this psalm to music. And it's, I will praise ye, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, with all my heart, and I will magnify your name forevermore with all my heart. <clears throat> For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast forget or delivered my soul from the lowest hell I will praise you with all my so see see that little song right there lifts you up it encourages you and the Bible is there to encourage us and we are supposed to also be here to encourage each other but so many times we we speak before we think and it causes discouragement yesterday I got real discouraged. I came home, and I told Debbie about it. I told Mark about it. I was discouraged, okay? But this morning, as I was going back through my message and reviewing everything, I thought to myself, I was a hypocrite yesterday because I let another brother discourage me in his actions. I should have been encouraging him instead of getting discouraged myself. Does that make sense? But we all, we're all guilty of it. Another psalm, and I'm not, another psalm, and I'm not going to sing this one. 
And this one, it's, it's comical to me because we learned this also at Bellevue. And Adrian Rogers used the King, the King James Version Bible all of the time that we were there. And this verse is not the King James Version. It's the New American Standard in the way we learn the song. It's, it's Isaiah 35, 10. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord uh, shall return and come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy shall be upon their heart, head. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and mourning will flee away. That's encouragement. That's another verse in God's Word that you can take and hide it in your heart and it will encourage you as you go through daily life. Because God has promised us to never leave us or forsake us. He's promised to always be there. And He will encourage us when we walk by faith. Came from God's Word. Another song that we used to sing, I always sang it to kids, and I've sang it here a few times. It's amazing what praising can do. I don't worry when things go wrong. Jesus fills my heart with a song. It's amazing what praising can do. So see, all those little things just encourage you to live that Christian life to not be a bah humbug Christian. Do we know some bah humbug Christians? I know a bunch of them. I know a bunch of them. Woe is me. Woe is me. We got a lot of them. Hope. That's the next part of that verse. Without the blood, there's no hope. Without the blood of Jesus, there's no hope. If Jesus hadn't have died on the cross, we'd all be doomed for hell. The only hope we have is in Jesus. Without God's Word to explain that, there's no understanding, which leads to no hope. If you don't have God's Word in your heart, if you don't have someone, if you don't have the Bible, if you don't have Jesus in your heart and understand it, you have no hope. We're supposed to have hope. We have hope of eternity. Ephesians 2.12 says... We are strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope without God in the world. See, the world out there has no hope. Yeah, they might have all this money. They may have all... The, the guy that discouraged me yesterday, a Christian, and I, lose that, I use that loosely, all he wanted to talk about yesterday was his $100,000 pickup truck and his $50 cigar that he was chomping on. And he, his, that was bad enough, but then he says, I got a case of them in my truck. Now, now think about that. Nothing about God. And I, and I turned to him and I said, glad God's blessing you. And then the next thing he says, well, I got 27 employees. I need to flash. You don't flash worldly. You flash God. And it, it discouraged me because I know he could use what he's got, what he does, and who he is for the glory of God. But he's gone from this side to this side. Now, is it because of COVID? Is it because he got away from the Lord? He got away from church during COVID? I don't know. He was involved in one of those groups that closed down for a while. Did he not go back? So all, we're, all we can do is just encourage one another. Encourage, encourage, encourage. Without God, there's no hope in the world. 
Is this how we feel sometimes? Do we feel like there's no hope? With the current economic situation in the world, with the current uh, leadership in the country, as Christians, do we feel like it's a dead end? I'm telling you, it's not. God's still in control. God still has a plan. And nothing will happen to me unless it flows through God's hands first. And if I die, it's God's purpose. If I live, it's God's purpose. I want to die with hope, sharing my hope, sharing my faith. I want to live sharing my faith, sharing my hope. I don't want to be that bah humbug Christian. Another song, you know, I love music. What's the song? I don't even know all, I just know the word, the, all my hope is within, all my hope is in you. That's a new song. That's a current song. All my hope's in you. All my hope's in you, Lord. All my hope's in you. Next slide. Be of one mind. I added the word hope because we can't be in one mind without hope. So I added that. That was a, I added that from last week. And I already put, I already said this, but I'll say it again in my notes here. Are you a bah humbug Christian? Do you not have hope? Do you have your fire insurance and that's good enough for you? Do you never share your faith? Do you never reach out? I wasn't sure I turned it on. Do you never reach out and show love to everybody else? That's what we're here to do. We're not here to just have our salvation and sit on it. And so many times I think that's what we all do from time to time. We get lazy. Be of one mind. Are you of one mind? Now may the God who gives you perseverance and encouragement grant you the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. See, as Christians, we're supposed to have one mind. We're supposed to love people. We're supposed to present the gospel. We're supposed to reach out to people. It's not about us. It's about God. And when we live in a life that we're not reaching, reaching, reaching for other people, we're not doing what God's called us to do. Everybody can't be a missionary. Everybody can't be a preacher. Everybody can't be a Sunday school teacher. But everybody that's a born-again believer, a follower of Christ, can share their faith. Do we do it? I've been a failure many times in my life. Do we do it? Be of the same mind. This passage keeps reverting, pointing back to uh, chapter 4, verses, chapter 14. Uh, it's chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Just keeps referring back every time you read it, and you get in your notes, and you get in your commentaries and all that stuff. It always reverts back, always points back to chapter 14. I didn't write it all down. But the passage says, Paul is urging strong and weak believers of God's Word, Christians to be Christ-like. Despite denominational, and, and denomination's not in there, but it was the Jews and the Greeks. That's why I said denomination. And two groups of religious people that had different points of view. He was urging both groups to be Christ-like, to have unity with one another. They had denominational difference, non-essential issues. And he was encouraging them to go after love, harmony, respect, and unity. 
especially on issues that the Bible's silent on. We talk a lot about the things that I grew up with. Maybe Ron had some of these things in his congregation. Maybe Gary did. Um, you know, y'all weren't raised in church, so it, it, you didn't have these issues. You might have seen them later in life. But I can remember, and I've said it before, when my best friend was told he couldn't come to the house anymore because I had a pool table in my garage. I grew up with him. I'd, I'd grown up with him from the time I was in the third grade until I was a senior in high school. Okay? We bought his pool table in about the 10th grade. And he was not allowed to come to my house for about a month and a half. And my dad finally caught on to what was going on and he went and saw the man and said, Ralph, you're wrong. Those boys are I'd rather them be spending time in our garage or at your house than going to a pool hall because you've embedded this so bad, okay? Pool tables aren't in the Bible. It was a religious thing that was started, and if I understand it right, it was a Baptist doctrine that was started because of pool halls and alcohol. Okay? Mixing the stuff up. Dancing. Music. What kind of music do you listen to? You know, there's a lot of... Now our Christian music's about as worldly as our non-Christian music. But, you know, if it reaches people, I'm not going to beat them up for it. King James Bible. Virgin Bible. Movies. What movies? You can't go to the drive-in. You can't go to the theaters. Instruments. Pianos in church. You know, they've even gone beyond pianos in church. When trumpets first started showing up in church and drums started showing up in church, churches were having a fit if they didn't agree with that group of people. That's not something that's... You know, trumpets are in the Bible. Stringed instruments are in the Bible. But yet... It doesn't fit today's culture. I've heard week-long sermons on these very issues. Don't beat somebody up because you don't agree with them. Love them. Show them. Walk with them. So that in one accord you may with one voice, verse 6, glorify the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One voice. Not the Baptist voice, the Church Christ voice, the Assembly of God voice, the whatever else, else is out there, but in one voice, the Christian voice. That's what we're supposed to do. And we spend so much time... I mean, y'all know, ever since I've been here, my thing has been unity. First thing I did when I became a pastor was I visited all the pastors in Jackson County and tried to start a prayer group. And got shut down, shut down, shut down. Well, guess what? Now we meet with five pastors every Tuesday morning from different groups. Wayne Wells helped with that. He's the one that got it, helped me get it started. And we have the Jackson County Prayer Warriors. Sometimes it's just us four no more. Okay? But we've continued and continued and continued. We can't give up. It's about unity. It's about reaching out. With one accord, one voice, walking together in unity. Unity, we must be real, and the world needs to see it. What happens when we have a debate or an argument or a disagreement with another faith? The world sees it. We look like a bunch of hypocrites. You know, we're supposed to love the other believers, just like we love the ones in this church. 
That's what the Bible tells us to do. Our unity pleases God, but when the church or the churches are not in unity, it only divides. It not only divides us as Christians, it divides the world that's looking at us. We have to have unity. What happens in some churches? Splits. Mark and I listened to a sermon this week, didn't we, Mark, about carpet. I've told stories about carpet before. Herb Revis, a preacher that I love to listen to, was preaching a message. And he went to a church, was it in Florida? In Florida. And, and he walked in the church, a beautiful sanctuary, and right down the middle, there was a carpet seam. Never heard of it. A carpet seam. This side was one color of green, light green. This side was another color of green. Right down the middle of the church. And he was asked, he asked the preacher, What's, did they mess up on the carpet run? Was there a mistake? Was there anything? He says, no, that's how we put it in. He said, why did you put in two colors of carpet? This group of people wanted this color. This group of people wanted another color. They wouldn't come together. They wouldn't agree on one color. So the way to solve it was we put a seam down the middle. And the ones that like this green sit on this side. The ones that like this green sit on the other side. Is that unity in the church? Does it look like stupidity in the church? Hey, I wanted chairs. Valette wanted pews. What do we got? Pews. It wasn't a win or a lose. Huh? I'm not, uh, no, I'm not quit. I, I know. And, and, I, and I still sit on my pew like I do all the time. I still sit there. And they're comfortable and they're nice. Okay? So you don't argue about insignificant stuff. I can remember the church I grew up in had the ugliest green curtains and the ugliest green prayer altar and platform that I'd ever seen in my life. It was built in the 70s, right? We got married and our wedding was right, red, white, and blue. How do you think it went with that green carpet or those green curtains? But... It didn't split the church. An interior decorator wanted green. I think it was Anna Mae McDaniel. <laughs> oh, it was ugly. <sighs> Curtains. Music. Translations of the Bible. We had a man here several years ago. I can't even remember his name now. He was an older guy. Every time he stood up and prayed, he prayed King James English. He finally left the church. Told me the reason he left was because we used new King James. If anybody wants to see it, I got a 1611 King James Bi Version Bible that was given to me this week. 1611. The original, original. You can't read it. In fact, some of the words in there, you, I, don't, I can't even understand them because of the letter changes. But it's the original. We had someone else, a good friend of mine, good friend of mine to come and visit the church and when he found out we were using the new King James Version Bible he visited one time and never came back see how we get hung up on garbage if it's God's word and God's using it to reach people the Bibles that we order for Kevin are English 
standard version. Why would we use that? Why would we choose that? Because that's the Bible that they ask for. Inmates ask for because they can understand it. They can understand it. The words are different. Gay means something entirely different in that Bible. Other words mean something entirely different. It's what we use to reach people. The last part of that verse is God and Father. Who's God and Father? Actually, it's talking about the deity of Christ. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus was not the adopted Son of God, but the Son of God. This is essential, being God and Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He's the nature of God. I got a lot of verses for God, God the Father. Blessed is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. We give thanks to God the Father of the Lord our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Blessed is God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Jesus didn't raise, we wouldn't be here today. If Jesus didn't rise again from the grave, there would be no hope of his salvation. And till we can grit a grip on that and understand that and preach that and teach that and live that, we're going to be dying. We won't die and go to hell. But we're dying. I don't know the right word to even say. We've lost our focus. We've lost our dedication. We've lost our outreach. Next slide. Accept one another. Do we accept one another? Do we reach across those lines to accept someone else? Even if we don't like them, even if they don't measure up to what we are, who we are, how we think, I don't never have a hundred thousand dollar truck. I don't want one. I don't want one. We talked about that yesterday. I don't want a thirty thousand dollar truck. I don't want a ten thousand dollar truck. I want something that gets me from point A to point B that looks good and runs good. That I can pull my camper with. I don't need to impress anybody except through my faith. That's what my focus needs to be. Therefore, accept one another just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. You're accepted if you're a Christian. Accept means that you personally and willingly accept without hesitation. And, and we've done this. When we've had people that come into church and they smell terrible, we've loved them. When we've had people come into the church and not dress right, we've loved them. When we had, y'all were here with Walking Bear. Walking Bear would come in the back door and roaches would be crawling off of him as he walked through the back door. We still loved him. We never kicked him out. We had a gay guy sit right back there for about six weeks. When he started coming to church here, I said, I don't agree with your lifestyle. I will not back off of God's word, but I'm going to tell you on the front end, I love you. 
and we're always here for you. We've had people join that come to the church not being married. We didn't kick them out. We loved them. That's what God's Word tells us to do is to love in every situation except we don't have to accept sin. We still preach sin. But if you don't love them in the process, they will leave because you didn't accept them. I'm not accepting their sin. I'm accept, accepting the fact that I'm supposed to love them. Personally and without hesitation. That's how we're supposed to accept people. The guy that called me this morning, well, my phone was ringing right here. This is recorded, so I've got to be careful. But... Sometimes it's difficult. But we still have to love them. Now accept one, another, one who is weak in faith. Romans 14.1 Now accept the one who is weak in faith. Everybody's not the same page you are. That was my problem growing up. I expected everybody to walk through those doors to be on the same page I was. My preacher... Jumped all over her. She wasn't even a Christian because her dress was too short. Was that showing love? Was it? Thankfully, I loved her. <laughs> she came back. She became a Christian. I don't care if if somebody comes in a mini skirt. I'm gonna get way up like this and preach from way back here, so I don't have to look at it. We've got to love them. One who's weak in faith. But not only for the purpose, not for the purpose, not only, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. Accept each other. And the last part of that verse says, as Christ accepted us. Do we all come from different walks of life? Do we all have different garbages in our life? I was raised in a Christian home, but I still got garbage. Y'all weren't raised in a Christian home. You still had garbage. But guess what? We still have garbage in our lives today. Just because we're saved by grace, all the garbage didn't go away. It's just easier to deal with. It's easier to ask for forgiveness. It's easier to live a life outside of that garbage is maybe the right word. Within God. But we still have garbage. We're still products of how we were raised. We're still products of where we live and what we do and our jobs and our schooling and our education. Everything. We've got to love people. As Christ accepted us, Christ accepted you. You're to accept your brother, your sister. If the perfect Son of God can accept us being unperfect, who are we to judge? He brought us into the family of God. We are to accept our brothers and our sisters He has brought in to the family of God. Not only to accept them, but embrace them, lift them up, encourage them, in spite of our differences. Do we do it? Do we do it? As believers, we're to love. We are to all. As believers, we are all in the family of God. One race. There's no such thing as race in the Bible. One race. We're all God's children. One bride. God's not going to have a bunch of concubines. One bride. 
the bride of Christ is the church. One bride. And this is the last one. One sinner saved by grace. If you're not a sinner saved by grace, we'd love to tell you how. Show you in God's Word. One sinner saved by grace. Romans 12.10 says, be, de uh, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Colossians 3.14 says, Beyond all things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Be imitators of God. That's the last part of that verse, or it leads to, alludes to. Therefore, be imitators, imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you. And He did more than just loved us. And He gave Himself up for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a... Uh, a fragrant aroma. What did God do? He reached out, reached out his hands, and instead of doing this, he reached out his hands and said, I love you this much. And when he loved us this much, he hung on the cross. And he died and was buried, and he rose again. He suffered all. The worst still, the worst death known to man even today is the crucifixion. And Jesus did it for us. Are you in the family? Are you a sinner saved by grace? I think everybody in here is. But I never know who's going to be here. But more importantly, or as important, I shouldn't say, because you've got to be in the family. Do you love your family? Do you love your family of God?